brother, sister, brother, no doctor. Amen. As long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. And I hope you feel the same way. Amen. He is all that we need. Jesus is good. God is good. Amen. Yeshua Hamashek. Hallelujah. The Son. The Son of God. The Son of the Creator of all things. This is Reverend Esther Scott. They call me Reverend Esther. I'm coming. Um, I would like to come to you today with a message questioning your strength in the belief of God. Question your belief, your faith. This is for all of those out there that I would like to call heavenly Marines. Amen. Fight your own battle, Marine. What are you expecting from God? Just what are you expecting from God? Have you ever thought about that? You know, we always uh, want God to do things for us, but what, just what do we do for him? Each one of us has a heavenly assignment, okay? And it's not just the job of the pastor to take us there, so to speak, but it's our job as well to know what we are called to do. And this is what I'm going to speak on today. There's too many people depending on a pastor. The pastor should do this. The pastor should do that. The pastor should have visited so-and-so in a hospital. The pastor should have delivered baskets to this one and that one and taken care of these people. And, but what do you do? What can you do to help out the pastor? Amen. Let me open this up with prayer. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba. Baruch Atad and I bless your name. We bless your name, Father God. We thank you for being in our lives. We thank you for fighting our battles. We thank you for teaching us those things that we need to know to fight our own battles as well. You gave us the power. And Father God, this is what I wish to convey to people today what you have shown me, that you already gave us the power. We keep asking and asking and asking, and we already have it through Christ Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, the real Kodesh within us. You left your spirit in us. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have all power through him. And I pray, Father God, that people see this today and exercise it and stop running, stop running from the tiger, but turn around and face the enemies. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, for all those that ask us for prayer in our churches, our prayer groups, our neighborhoods, our families, we lift them up to you because we know that you answer prayer. As we are also going to see in this sermon today, Father God, that you've given me to give to your people. Amen. That we already have our prayers heard and answered before we even realize that they were. Fill your people with strength, victory, abundance, prosperity, peace and love, wealth, hallelujah, joy. Fill your people with all those good things that you meant for us to have in the first place, Father God. Daily, fill us day. Every morning we wake up and open up our eyes. Cause us to see that those things we've been asking for, we already have. We don't have to keep begging and crying because you already gave it to us. Amen. Cause us to be your heavenly marine down here on earth and win people to to Jesus, to Yeshua HaMashiach on our faith in him. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Bless every person that listens, that's listening, all those that called in, those that listen later. Bless our households, Father God. And cause us or cause our minds to be able to focus to be doing for the kingdom of heaven and not just for our own homes and our own families and our own selves. Cause us to let go of the selfishness, Father, and see that we are needed by a crying world. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Hallelujah, amen. God is so good. You know, prayer works. Prayer is good. Prayer is a wonderful thing. Prayer is part of your A victory over the enemy. There's some people, they don't take prayer seriously, but they don't understand that prayer is talking to God. 
It's not directing him, okay? It's not telling him what to do. Prayer is talking to God to see what he has to say back to you. Prayer is communication with our Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Always communicate with the Lord. You know, we talk to each other. We talk on a phone. We talk on, on the Internet. We talk in all kinds of radios. When's the last time you had a really, really good talk with God? I'm not talking about being upset about something or being mad and you just want to lash out and you need someone to talk to so you take it out on the Lord. When is the last time you actually meditated, as I keep saying, meditating? Uh, conversing the Lord, and he will answer. I believe some of you listening to this have, have you, you've heard him answer you, but you're, not, you're, so, you're so not used to it that you don't, you don't realize that was him. If you've been praying and if you've ever said anything and you heard an answer, you heard something, even an amen, that's God letting you, and he's answering you. That's his voice. Okay, sometimes he'll answer you personally. Some people, many people don't hear him audibly. But a lot of times he does speak audibly. And sometimes it could be one of his angels speaking for him. I've actually prayed for things before. And even sometimes when I'm, when I'm uh, preaching sermons, messages, I'll say something and I'll, it comes from like another place somewhere. I, I hear somebody say, Amen. And there's nobody here with me. <laughs> That's God. If you've asked him something and you heard a voice, that's God speaking to you. He speaks to our heart. The devil tries to use our minds. He tries to use our flesh, which would be your ears. Amen. God is better than that. He proved himself to us by speaking to our hearts. The enemy can't speak to your heart. He uses the flesh. God speaks to your heart. Amen. So listen, I have a lot to cover here today. Lord, help me. Amen. May the Holy Spirit use me. Amen. And deliver this because without him, it just will not make any sense. Amen. <laughs> There's so many people out there trying to do things on their own. And they think they're doing good. And, but it, without the Lord. It's not going to mean anything to anybody. Amen. So I want to ask you this today. Are you a warrior? I know um, there was a movie out called War Room. I hope I have that right, War Room. I watched it. The, the movie's awesome. That lady in that movie, the elderly lady, the older lady, she was a warrior. She prayed and she, bind, she binded the enemy. She rebuked the enemy. She wasn't scared. She wasn't afraid. She could care less about spooky movies she saw on TV and all that mess they show on TV to try to instill fear in you. She took over the, and she bound the enemy and called goodness down from the throne of God. Do you do that? This is what God wants you to know. This is what he wants you to do. And if you haven't done it yet, he wants you to start doing it. There's too many people operating in timidity. In order to be a, oh my God, in order to be a Marine, a heavenly Marine, okay, with no, I'm not leaving, I'm not trying to make them better than the Army and the Navy and Air Force, and, and no. It, 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 I'm, they're all the same, warriors. They're all warriors, Amen. I chose Marine because I'm a Marine. Amen. <laughs> Super fine to all you Marines who are listening. Okay, in order to be a heavenly Marine, you must not be afraid of the enemy. You must march in to these battles knowing, as King David did, who was a successful warrior and a king and a priest. He was all three. You must march in to these battles knowing that God is on your side. He's with you, and you are going to win. If you want to um, kill the giant with your smooth, small, small, smooth stone, you got to not be afraid to use the sling and the stone, right? If you're shaken and you're, if your knees are shaken, and, and you're just you're ready to turn around and run, timidity. That means that you don't have faith that God's going to win that battle for you. Amen. You have to be bold. 
there's a um, scripture that says, be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. We used to sing it in church, be bold. They repeat it, be bold, be strong, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Amen. You got to know he's with you, okay? It's one of those kind of situations where you're standing there, the giant's standing in front of you, and, and he's, he's talking all kind of smack on you. He's saying, he's cursing at you. He's saying all kind of ignorant things. Okay, but are you ready to run? Fight or flight. Isn't that what they say? Be ready to fight. Know that God is hearing, the God in you. You're not the only one that's hearing this. Stop. You know, we, a lot of people need to stop concentrating on their flesh and realize that their spirit is connected with God. You have God in you. Okay, and even though you're listening to this giant threatening your life, threatening your family, your children, your household, your job, your finances, and everything else, know that the God inside of you is getting ready to throw that stone in his head and bring him down to the point where the enemy's head will be cut off. You cut off the head of the enemy, and the body cannot live. Amen. So are you a warrior? If not, may the grace of God carry you today and bring these words into your ears and your heart and show you that you are. Amen. The Bible says, work out your own salvation. Amen. And the the first one I'll go to, um, I'm going to do these one at a time here, Philippians. Uh, Philippians, if you have your word with you, turn with me. If you can, Philippians 2.12. All right, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. And I checked it out to make sure it was right. I'm, I'm using my online Bible. Well, the Bible I have on my desktop, on my uh, on my Mac. Okay, and um, a couple times I've, I've done sermons and, and, and wrote down the wrong scripture. <laughs> what an embarrassing time, amen. But I checked this one, Philippians 2, 12. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit causes us to just roll on anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. When he gets started, ain't no stopping. Philippians 2.12. Listen to this. Working out your own salvation. Work is a verb. It's an action word. You have to work out your own salvation. In order to be a Marine, you got to work. Amen. If you want to be successful, you got to work. Hallelujah. Philippians 2.12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence, okay, whether your pastor or your preacher or your teacher or whoever, your Sunday school teachers around you, whether they're with you or they're absent, it says work out your own salvation with, okay, fear and trembling, which means respect that God is with you. You're not, you're going to be, now if you're too bold, okay, there's something wrong there, okay, I'm a singer, I've been singing for years, and we always say that when you go out on that stage or something, and or wherever you're at, church, pulpit, wherever you're at, and if you're too bold, too, you know, there, there's a problem there, okay, you should always feel something, okay, um, some people are just, and you could see it on them, when you see someone do something and they're too bold about it, okay, um, there's there's a they're conceited. There's a I hate to say it, there's conceit there. They're operating on their own strength and not by God. Because when you're operating by God's power, you don't know what He's going to do next. So just be open. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just be open. Okay. Now let's go to another one. First Thessalonians one three. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor. Then notice work and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. See, work, labor, patience. Amen. Hebrews 9.14. Go to Hebrews 9.14, which says, How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit Offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serving the living God. There's so many people, as I said, when they go out there and they're, they're confident in too much confidence in themselves, that, that shows that they are not depending on God because God could change the Hey, I've actually preached 
before, and I'm not the only one. I've heard other, other preachers say this too. I've preached before, and I've, I've sung before in places where God changed the whole program. <laughs> okay? Just because, okay, let's say you're going to a, a Christmas program at a church, and, and the choir sings, and the, the preacher reads the Bible and opens up, and, and all this happens, and whatever they're doing, preparing for, and then you get up, and you're supposed to speak for 15 minutes. What if God wants you? What if the Holy Spirit's using you and you end up speaking for 40 minutes? Are you embarrassed? No, better still, wait, hold up. Does the pastor stop you? (laughs) If the pastor stops you and says, okay, that's been long enough, then there's a problem. The the pastor needs to open up his heart and see that God is going to have his way. Now, wait, there are some people who overdo it. I've seen people invited to just speak small sermons, just little partials, because they had more people speaking, like the seven um, last words of Christ. I've seen people get up and just, you're only supposed to, see, you have to also do what you're asked to do, okay, and especially for certain things like that, like seven words of Christ, you're only supposed to speak for about 10, 15 minutes. I saw a woman get up there and speak about 30, 35 minutes, and you look at the people, and you could tell the people were just like shocked, <laughs> What she was speaking, and she was just going, and, and people were like, okay, this has been a little too long. So, see, you got to do what you're asked to do as well, okay? And if you call on the Father who, without this person, judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Amen. Amen. First Peter one seventeen, And if you call on the Father, okay, if you ask God, who doesn't have respect of person, he doesn't treat the next person better than he treats you, so we need to stop thinking that way too, okay? Um, Judges according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Amen, amen. So in other words, no fear of the enemy, but respect God. Use the word fear as far as respecting God. Amen. Be extraordinary. God wants you to be extraordinary. He wants you to go the extra mile, okay? Amen. He doesn't want you to be like um, King Hezekiah, okay, in Second Kings 2021. 20, Hezekiah, uh, he, he, just, he, he literally showed his enemy all of his armor and everything, walked him through the, the, his, his, uh, his kingdom, Walked them all through, showed them all of the armor and all of his weapons. Never show the enemy your weapons. Never share, okay? And and God prolonged his life. King Hezekiah was dying. God prolonged his life. And I was talking about prayer earlier. earlier. God heard his prayer. He prayed to God and asked him to let him live long because he, he told God, I've been serving you. Can you please let me live a little longer? And before the prophet Isaiah could even leave, God had answered his prayer. So, see, it doesn't always take 21 days like in Daniel for you to get your answer for your prayer. Before Isaiah even left the house, okay, God answered him. Okay, and But never expose your secrets to the enemy. And I have a video on YouTube. Go to Esther R. Scott on YouTube. Um, or you spit a Lady Rev 1257, and just look for uh, Never Expose Your Secrets to the Enemy. Watch that video. Amen. Now, here are some things you're going to need if you want to be a heavenly Marine. Amen. Plan. These are words that the Lord showed me. I'm not making these up, and so I'm telling you what he showed me. You have to be clandestine. Don't tell all your business. As I said, King Hezekiah did here, be stealth, secrecy, have secrecy about you, covert. And they get a word sneaky, undercover, okay? Uh, you don't always have to lash out to prove who you are, what you are in Christ, amen? And use discretion, amen? Be prudent. The, have the power of free decision, or latitude of choice. Use common sense. Show good judgment. Capable of observing prudent silence, non-continuous, detached, disconnected, separate, unattached. Amen. You have to know when to use your power. Amen. 
watch everything that's going on, and then use your power and put a stop to the enemy's mess. Amen. Then commando. Confirmation of you being a commando is the scripture that we just read. You have to be a commando, unstoppable, okay? Be tactical. Show that you are sent in to go in under a certain set of circumstances. Amen? You are sent in under a certain set of circumstances. There are times where you're going to have to turn into that Marine. Amen. And then tactical itself is a planned action for an accomplished end. Plan for this. Plan to always get victory. Plan to always win. Don't ever let that that dark shadow come over you and try to take over you. Always stay bright. Always, always know that God wants you to be happy. There's no room for depression. Keep your joy, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's intended for a particular purpose, politic, prudent, be wise, maneuvering forces in combat. Jehovah, Sabbath, is working <clears throat> for you to be tactical. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a pastor named Pastor Chin from California, and he left his mega church. And um, he said because God showed him that everybody in the church has a blessing. Everybody in the church has something, a, a gift from God that they can use for the heavenly kingdom. And he began to see where he was preaching. And he said after he preached, everybody just sat there and everything and listened to him. And then after he preached, he just got in his car and went home. He said there was something missing. He said, God is calling everyone, not just the pastor, to get things done for the kingdom. And he actually left his mega church. He said, isn't it a shame that some gangs and groups offer more family relationships than some churches? It's a shame whenever the pastor just sits there and does everything and the people just listen and go home, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So here's what I'd like for you to do today. Amen. Okay, hold your Bible, okay, and look in a mirror. Hold your Bible and look in the mirror, okay? Look at the Bible and say, this is my weapon, and look in the mirror. Stick out your tongue and say, this is a gun. One is a blessing, and the other is no fun. That's your exercise for today, Marine. Amen? This is my weapon. Hold up your Bible. Stick out your tongue and say, this is a gun. One is a blessing. Any other is no fun. So we speak less, read the word more, fill yourself with the power, hallelujah, and go out and be that commando, be that heavenly marine for the Lord. Amen. Take in more. Listen more, talk less, amen. Watch how the enemy works around you. Know his tactics, know his ways. Why should he know all of yours, amen. Remember I was saying clandestine, secrecy, stealth, covert, covert, uh, sneaky and undercover, amen. Hallelujah. So are you ready? Are you ready? Are you saved? Do you have Jesus Christ as your Savior? Is he your Savior? If he's not, just simply say this. Forgive me, Jesus, of all my sins. I accept you as my personal Savior. Teach me your ways. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You say that and mean it from your heart, not just the words. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him to be your Lord, and you are saved. He automatically, instantly saved you. You, welcome to the family of God. Heavenly Marie, amen. Get your weapon. Get your weapon and be blessed. Hallelujah. Now go out and look for a Bible-believing, tongue-talking church. See, that's what you're supposed to do with that tongue. Amen. (laughs) 
Amen. That's what you're supposed to do with your tongue. Hallelujah. Go out, learn about him, and teach others about him. It's not just the pastor's job to do so. It's all of our job. I hate to use the word job. It's actually a blessing to be able to tell other people about Jesus Christ. And if people don't accept him, there's nothing you can do about it. It's not your fault. Don't hold it against yourself. Okay? Don't feel bad when some of those say no. Amen? So hold on to your Bible and get to marching, y'all. Amen? Get to marching. As they used to say in the Marine Corps when I was in there, you left, you left, right and left, you left, right and left, right and left, right and left. Amen. Get to marching. Hallelujah. Left, right, left foot, right. You left, right, left, yeah. Left foot, right. Hallelujah. Left, right, left, yeah. Get to walking. Get to marching. And do what God has called you to do. Amen. You don't need me. You don't need anybody else to do kingdom work. God bless you. And if you have any questions, you can write me at revsetme.com. Hallelujah. God bless you. God keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. And may he give you his peace always. Always know God has peace. And always remember this. Jesus is always Lord, hallelujah. God bless you. I'll see you next Sunday. Blog Talk Radio, Esther R. Scott, 10 a.m. EST. Love you. But know that God loves you more. Reverend Essie signing off. God bless.